Now let's consider some basic results in the economic theory of advertising. We see plenty of ads in everyday life, but there's also really a lot about advertising which we don't understand. But let's start with a few points which we do understand. Just some basic facts. Right now in the United States, advertising is about 1% of GDP. That amounts to about $144 billion. And the four leading advertisers are listed here. Some advertising is about prices and telling people that your price is lower than somebody else's. And indeed, there are some classic economic studies which show that when advertising is allowed in numerous areas, prices tend to fall because there's better information and the market is more competitive. Examples of this would be for eyeglasses and also prescription drugs. There are also some areas where advertising seems to raise prices, and one example that's been studied here are some parts of the alcohol market. It may be the case that this advertising is simply about persuasion, pushing one brand over another, and not necessarily giving customers very much information or very much information about prices. And in that case, more advertising can mean higher costs and ultimately for the customer, higher prices as well. There are three fundamental theoretical views about what advertising does, and the first is called the informative view or the information theory, and that is, as mentioned, advertising can tell customers about products, it can tell customers about prices, and because it leads to more information, this kind of advertising tends to make market demand more elastic and more responsive to price. This kind of advertising usually is considered welfare improving. Note that sometimes advertising can be informative without necessarily appearing very informative. Sometimes you see a lot of ads and all they do is repeat the name of the product again and again and again and they don't seem to tell you anything about the product or its price. But nonetheless, in some theories which are called signaling theories, these ads still can be indirectly informative about the product. The very fact that the ad is being taken out maybe means the manufacturer really expects the product to succeed. So the ad is in effect signaling that this is likely to be a successful product. If the product were going to be a dud, they wouldn't be spending so much on the advertising. So when you think about informative theories of advertising, just keep in mind, information can be communicated in a number of different ways. Another theoretical view of advertising is that some advertising is about persuasion. This is called the persuasive view. So advertising is about switching market demand from one product to another. You're just trying to tell people or somehow talk them into the notion that your product is better. This often makes market demand less elastic. It can lead to higher prices, as mentioned before, in the case of alcohol. And very often by commentators or economists, this kind of advertising is especially likely to be considered wasteful. It's a little hard to say in the formal economic sense whether this advertising is actually wasteful because within the framework of economics we don't have a way of judging of whether the new preferences induced by the advertising are better or worse than the old preferences. But still some resources have been spent and possibly prices are higher and if there's no obvious reason to think the new preferences are somehow better there's at least a possible case for viewing this kind of advertising as at least partially wasteful. Another theory of advertising is called the complementary view, and you can think of this as an attempt to modify the view that advertising is just persuasive. In this view, the product and the ad are complements, or rather, they make each other more valuable. So you can think of, as, of an advertisement as attaching a quality, something like social prestige, or maybe coolness to the product itself. So the ad actually makes the product more valuable. Imagine, for instance, a Nike sneaker, which is now associated with the image of a famous basketball star. If you're wearing the sneaker, all of a sudden you will feel more cool and you will value the product more. So in this view, it's not just persuasion in the sense that it might be it's a pointless changing of people's minds, but rather you're persuading people by actually making your product more valuable and more fun or more appealing to use. So unlike in the persuasion view, this kind of advertising is not in general wasteful, and in fact in general it's somewhat valuable because it's giving customers something for free and making products more fun, interesting, or entertaining. The complementary view also explains why in essence we pay customers to watch ads by often packaging those ads with 
ads with valuable programs, such as on television or radio. Watching the ads will in fact shift out the demands for products, and so manufacturers want to do something like embedding those ads in good radio and television programs, which makes those ads more appealing or more attractive or just harder to get away from. The key point in this case is that the ad is both creating value for the product, but also creating value within the world of media as well. One neglected feature of advertising is that it very often makes retailing much more efficient. Just imagine how often you rely upon your knowledge of different brands. When you go to the store, you look at brands, you recognize a lot of them, you don't have to ask the store clerk what basically is going on. Ads are, in essence, a big driver of retail productivity. Advertising now also is better targeted, and this is largely because of information technology. In the 1960s, critics commonly alleged that our economy would be swallowed up more and more by advertising. This has hardly turned out to be the case. In fact, if anything, in a number of media, most prominently newspapers, there's a kind of financial crisis because there's not enough advertising in those media and ads are being better targeted by, say, use of Google or, say, Craigslist rather than classified ads for a newspaper. Over time, the tendency in a market economy is to try to measure value more accurate, accurately and thus economize on how many ads are needed. This video is just an introduction to what is obviously an enormous topic. Of course, you can start by googling economics of advertising, there's plenty there, but I'd like to recommend to you a particular study by Kyle Bagwell called The Economics of Advertising. This is online, but let me just warn you, there's a few different versions of this piece online. Some are much shorter and some are much longer. Uh, they're all excellent, but just make sure you're getting the length of this piece which you want before reading it. Becker and Murphy have a seminal article, A Simple Theory of Advertising as a Good or Bad, and they lay out the compliments theory discussed uh, before. And there's a very good short blog post by Timothy Taylor, The Case For and Against Advertising, and some of the information early in this video comes from that piece.